hello everyone welcome and welcome back again to my channel so in today's video i'll be showing you how to make this milk made crop top with puffy sleeves with a pattern i created myself so if you would want this pattern it's going to be linked in the description box uh, and it's going to be free for the next one week after posting this video okay and it comes with like four sets the crop top the mini gathered dress the midi slit dress and the midi gathered slit dress and all the dresses come with a pocket I mean it's optional so yeah if you if you're actually interested in this then please click the link in the description box and download it okay so let's just jump right into the video so i already cut out the patterns or cut out the fabrics i needed for this so that's the fabric itself and the lining so right now i'm going to connect the front bodies together so i'm going to place the center front having it the right side facing upwards and i'm just going to place the sides of the center the sides of the front bodies together with the center front as well so making sure that the right sides are facing each other and i'm going to pin them down and sew on a half an inch seam allowance and i'm basically going to do the same thing with the lining as well So now we're going to connect the back, back bodies together. So you're going to connect the center back and the side back bodies together on each side of the um, back bodies. So you're going to have four pieces all together. So two pieces for the center back and two pieces for the side back. Same thing applies to the lining as well. So two pieces for the center back and two pieces for the side back. And you're also going to sew on it half an inch seam allowance. So it comes with a half an inch seam allowance unless stated otherwise in the instructions okay so yeah Okay, so this is what the cent um, the front bodice looks like and you're going to want to join the back bodice to this front bodice but before you do that you want to make sure you iron it first i just like doing that because it makes the work e neater and just easier to move on with especially the places that have been sewn on like so and after doing that the next step is to connect the front and the back bodies together having right sides facing each other like so and i'm going to pin them down and sew on a half an inch seam allowance i'm basically going to do the same thing with the lining pinning the right side uh, pinning the back bodies to the front bodies having right sides facing each other and I'm going to sew on a half an inch seam allowance as well. Okay, so for the bust cup, you're going to cut four pieces of that and having two pieces mirroring each other. Then once you do that, you have the mirrored pieces placed on top, like placed together like so. Make sure you find the one that is correct. Then you place them together like so. And you're going to sew the top of the um, bust cup on a quarter, a quarter inch seam allowance. So now for the strap, you're going to um, place in the bust cup, you fold it. Um, having right sides facing each other and you're going to sew on a one quarter seam allowance as well and you're going to be cutting two straps of this so after you're done sewing the bust cup this is what you should have so you're going to fold the center front of the bust cup twice and just sew on a straight line because you don't want the edges there showing 
so after you do that this is what you'll have then you fold it having the wrong sides facing each other like so then you're going to pin them together so once you pin them together you take your ruler or your measuring tape and you measure um, half an inch seam half an inch downwards from the top of the bust cup and you're going to draw a line right there and you're going to sew you sewing right there is going to create a casing for the straps to pass through then after doing that the next step is to go ahead and create gathers at the bottom of the bust cup in order for you to do that there is also there is a notch created on the pattern but i forgot to um you know transfer the notch so i had to use my chalk to create that and you're going to create a gathering stitch or a basting stitch and once you do that this is what you'll have but before i gather it the first thing i want to do right now is to pass the straps through the casing i created at the top of the bust cup so now we're going to start off by joining the bust cup to the bodice so in order for you to do that you need to create gathers and in order for you to create the gathers you need to um pull one of the threads so if you want to pull the top make sure it's at the top you are pulling all through and if you want to pull the bottom make sure it's the bottom you are pulling all through and you're just going to pull them until they fit the um size of the bust cup So after you're done pulling all of them, this is what you should have. And now the next step is to pin this onto the bodice. So you pin the center first. Then after pinning the center, it's easier for you to pin the sides of the bust cup to the bodice. You will see what I'm talking about in a minute. Okay, so after pinning everything down, this is what you should have. And this is the wrong side facing upwards. And you're going to just sew um, that down. You sew the, um, the bust cup to the bodice like down like so. I hope I'm explaining that well. And after you're done doing that, you keep that aside. And next is to focus on the sleeves. So you'd want to create a puff sleeve. And in order for you to do that, you need to have casings so i already created notches on the pattern for you indicating where the casings would be placed at and in order for you to do that you'd need extra fabric for the casing so for this right here i'm using a two inch wide um strap and the length is going to be the length of the sleeve itself so what you'd want to do is to fold the edge of the fabric that you're using for the casing and you're just going to pin that down you fold the other edge as well you folding it like a quarter of an inch and you pin it down as well and you do the same thing to the other end of the sleeves then once you pin the edges down it just makes it easier for you to pin the center of the straps down as well After pinning everything down you're going to find the center of that casing created and you draw a straight line on that center you've created you found and you're just going to sew the center as well the reason why you're doing this is because you're going to create two casings on one on one of the strip or one of the strap 
and having two elastic bands passing through once you do that the the next step is to fold the hem of the sleeve so you can sew that down. You fold it twice using half an inch, no, a quarter of an inch on each fold twice, okay? Then you just pin that down and hem it. After pinning that down, you're basically going to do the same thing you did to the top first casing and apply that same method to the second casing. So after sewing everything down, the next step is to pass your elastic band through through the casings and for the top casing, you're going to measure your arm and whatever measurements you get is what you're going to cut out for your elastic band and for the second casing, you're going to measure your wrist and that will be the measurement you use to cut out the elastic band for the wrist as well. And for each casing, you're going to be cutting out two elastic bands because there are two casings or two sub cases on each case and I hope that makes sense then after you pass the last band through you're just going to pin it down because you aren't sewing it just yet So you're basically going to do the same thing to the bottom casing as well. So after you're done passing all the um, elastic band through the casings, the next step is to fold the sleeves having right sides facing each other and just pin them down. And after you're done pinning them down, you're going to sew on a half an inch seam allowance. So the next step is to join the sleeves to the bodies and in order for you to do so you're going to place your bodies facing having the right side facing up and you're going to place your sleeve having the right side of that side facing down so the right sides would be facing each other and you're just going to pin it like so So after you're done sewing that down, the next step is to create a casing for the elastic band to pass, pass through at the top of the sleeve. And you're going to fold the top of the sleeve by half an inch to have your casing pass through, your elastic band rather to pass through. And when you pin it down, make sure that when you decide to sew, you 
don't you don't start sewing from the beginning and to the end you leave a space at the beginning and a space at the end so that you can have your elastic band pass through and come out the other end So after you pass it to the other end, you, what you're going to do now is just to fold the fabric to cover the elastic band and you're just going to sew a straight stitch there. Next step is to join the lining to the bodies and in order for you to do so, you have the wrong sides of the bot of the fabrics, both the bodies and the lining facing upwards, so basically facing you and you just pin them down like so. So after doing that, you're going to sew all that together. But before you sew it together, you're going to um, measure an inch from the starting point and an inch from the ending point. And you're going to sew an inch away from the edge, basically, and stop at inch before the end when you're done sewing. That way, you attach your zip to the top, okay? So after you're done sewing everything, this is what you should have. And the next step is just to attach the zip to the bodice. And for the zipper allowance, I usually prefer to use an inch for the zip allowance. So if you are not comfortable with that, you could cut off half an inch from that and just work with it. So after sewing the zipper onto the bodies, I'm just going to cut off the excess zipper that we do not need anymore. And after cutting it, you're just going to flip the um, bodies and the lining having the wrong sides facing each other.
so this is what it looks like so far i am just trying to make sure that the zip was sewn properly because you don't want one side looking higher than the other and when i'm satisfied with what the process looks like we're going to go on with the final process which is hemming the bottom and in order for you to hem the bottom you're going to fold the bottom um by half an inch on both the lining and the body so you fold the you fold all of them inside and you're just going to top stitch it so if you're interested in getting this pattern please know that it's going to be available for a week and the link is in the description box like i said at the beginning of this video so yeah this is what the final result looks like and i really really love it and one thing i'll point out is that please when you're cutting out this make sure you cut out you take your measurement before cutting it out and the reason why i say so is because for example i my waist used to be a 28 right but i realized that after i sewed this it was slightly bigger for me because I ended up losing like two inches of waist measurements after I had cut out the pattern and made the body. So I had to go back to him to adjust that. So please make sure you take your measurement first before you do that. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed this. And the next one that is going to be coming up on the Milkmaid set is going to be the Milkmaid gathered mini dress and like i said all of them come with pockets so i really hope you like it and the pockets are obviously optional so if you're not interested in them you can skip that process so yeah thank you so so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video let me see if you end up creating something with this you could find me on instagram i always leave the link to the in my instagram handle down in the description box and yeah thank you once more and i will see you all in the next video bye